Early Empires of China by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. In this video, we will discuss the Chang Dynasty, the Zhou, the Qin, and the Han Dynasties. Please make sure that you listen closely and answer the questions on the note sheet provided. Let's get started. The first step is the Chang Dynasty. Now the Shang Dynasty ruled from around, notice the symbol here, 1600 BCE to 1045 BCE. And it was centered around the Huanghe Valley, as shown in here. And up to this point, it's thought of as a myth. Now, what's a myth? They didn't think it was real. But about 100 years ago, and I can't believe it's almost been 100 years, the capital city, the former capital city of Anyang was discovered. And it showed evidence of this once mythic dynasty actually being true. Now, we know they used oracle bones made from animal bones and tortoiseshells to talk with their ancestors. Now, by talking to their ancestors, what does that tell you? If you're singing right now, in the afterlife, you're absolutely correct. It was the afterlife because they believed in it. If you talk with your ancestors, you probably are talking to the dead, which means there must be life after it. Now, they believed that power was inherited from father to son. And eventually, though, this dynasty ended when they were conquered by the Zhou. Now, let's take a quick look and see what their cities may have looked like with the probably the king or their leader right here, the nobles living in the houses right nearby. Here's the farmland which is where that and probably the slaves were working in this area too. Please take a moment to pause the video if you need. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Now, after conquering the Shang Dynasty, the Zhou began to rule in 1045 BCE. They justified their power by ruling under a concept known as the Mandate of Heaven. It stated that the gods had picked them, the Zhou, to rule instead of the corrupt Shang, and which is the basics of the Mandate of Heaven. Whoever has it, it's their duty to rule. And the people they replaced were clearly corrupt and had lost Heaven's approval. During their rule, they ruled in a concept known as feudalism. Now, feudalism means that the king allowed nobles to control their land, but he, they still have to pay him a tax or a portion to him. It was thought that this would make things easier on a larger kingdom. And the Zhou set up their capital in Chang'an, I hope I said that right. I apologize if not. Now known today as Xi'an. Now the system began to falter, right? If you give people too much power, they're going to want more power. And even more and more. When the nobles became strong and the king became weaker. And this led to a period of unrest. And in fact, it led to a war that we will talk about called the Warring States Period. And although the Zhou will survive to the end of the war, they will eventually fall in the, reunifica in the unification under the Qin Dynasty in 221 BCE, as shown up here. Please take a moment and fill out your note sheet and remember to answer the question, what is feudalism? You might need to go back and re-listen to the video. As you're pausing it, that's a good choice. I'm going to keep going 
and you can join me when you're ready. Next up is the Warring States period. And you can see on the map I'm about to show you that all of these areas that were controlled by the Zhou, the Han, the Qin, the Chu, etc., began to want more power. Now they had been allowed to rule on their own under feudalism, but that changed as they wanted more power. They thought they should control it. And it was fighting for control of China. Oops. Now, that's really the sense of what happened during the Warring States period. But let's focus on the good. I know, you're asking, how can good happen? But during this time, three philosophers are born. Now, the most well-known, I would say, depending on who you talk to, is Confucius, known as Kung Fu Tzu. And he was born during this time, and when he saw what was going on, it greatly upset him. And he believed in education, educating everybody to have good and moral, knowing right and wrong, behavior. He presented on the five relationships that all people are involved in. And we'll talk much more about that uh, later on. But it doesn't become really popular for another 200 years when the Han Dynasty takes over. The next person is Lao Tzu, who founded Taoism. You'll sometimes see Taoism with a T in English, but it's still pronounced Taoism. And he preached the way, which means to live in harmony and with balance, yin and yang. And he believed people, specifically rulers, needed to step back, not try to control everything. And, excuse me, and not try to do everything. The last person we'll talk about formed legalism, and his name is Han Fei Tzu. And he demanded structure. He believed in legalism and that people were dishonest. And he looked to want to create structure for them so that they wouldn't have time to make poor choices. Now, legalism will come to rise in the Qin Dynasty, but it's not the most popular um, because it is asking a lot of the people. Now, the Warring States period and the period of the Zhou end in two, um, 221 BCE with the conquest by the Qin Dynasty. Please take a moment to pause the video and fill out the note sheet and turn the sheet over to put the three philosophers on the back and write down as much as you know. Don't look on Baidu, Google, Bing. Look and just, just write down what you know. Do the best you can. We're going to pause the video and when you're ready, you can join us. Next up is the Qin Dynasty. And it ruled from 221 to 210 BCE. Never before had a group of people, had, had China been unified as a group of people. But thanks to Qin Qi Huang, I apologize if I got that wrong, that finally happened. Now he, like his dynasty, only lasts in power for 11 years. But as you can see from the image, they were able to conquer a lot of land, and that's really impressive. Now, his first one of his major projects is that he builds the first part of the Great Wall, which is a tremendous accomplishment. Or it just means you have a lot of really good slaves. <laughs> but during his reign, he also standardized writing and other cultural practices, which in the scheme of things, you know, may have lost some of their individual identity, but it, the goal was to bring people together as one. And he ruled following legalism. Here he is, the handsome devil himself. And he was a very strict ruler who was brutal to those who opposed his rule. After his death, or was it murder? We're not sure. 
It created a civil war. Now, his tomb itself is what was really impressive. It's a tomb that was built with thousands of terracotta warriors, and I actually had the opportunity to visit this, as you can see. There's the pit one. I think that's pit two or three. That's pit one, and that's me in pit one as well. These are chariots that were found and bowmen, and of course the statue of him protecting his tomb. Now, as I said earlier, his rule was legalist and he was very brutal, but he's also the first to unify China, so we can't give him too much grief. Now, when he died, civil war broke out, and, and that lasted for four years until the reunification under Liu Bang, who began the Han Dynasty. Oops. Please take a moment to pause the video as you answer the question, why was Qin Shi Huang so famous? As well as filling out the rest of the notes for that section. Please feel free to pause the video as I said already. Um, otherwise, you can join us on the Han Dynasty. The last dynasty we will cover in this video is the Han Dynasty. And they ruled from 206 BCE to 220 CE, which is a really long time in ancient times. As you can see as well, they were able to conquer all the way from Korea, present day, to Vietnam. And they will also extend part of the wall. And I mentioned this. Now they lived at a time that was known as a golden age, which means that it was a time of great wealth, prosperity, and for the most part, peace when they weren't conquering. But it means that there wasn't a lot of inner turmoil. Now, during this time, they followed Confucianism to help choose positions by skill, not by nobility, who your parents were. This was supported through the use of civil service exams. They invented paper, which allowed for the rise of calligraphy. And while many emperors during this time were famous, we're going to pick Wu Di who helped set up universities and prepared all students that wanted to for civil service exams as the fifth emperor of the Han Dynasty. Now, if you think someone else is more famous and you have a good reason, write them down instead. That's awesome. And we'll talk about it in class. After 400 years of rule, it was believed that the Hun had lost the mandate of heaven as they were overthrown, leading to an age known as the Three Kingdoms. Please take a moment to fill out your note sheet and to answer the question why Wu Di was famous. The end.